Good day, mate. <laughs> How you doing, mate? <laughs> Music to my ears. I'm starving. Oh, might have to unbutton the jeans. I called camembert, camembert. <laughs> I love cheese. I feel like sometimes in a cheesecake they put too much cheese in. There's no cheese in it. It's a cheese in a cheesecake. Yeah, but it's not like cheddar. That's cheese. <laughs> If I'm out, I'll drink gin. Pure gin? No. <laughs> Who do you think I am? Let's cut that bit out. <laughs> Hi, I'm Emma, and we are joined today by the wonderful Lauren Saddington um, at the Lowry Hotel in Manchester, where we'll be trying some of their fabulous afternoon tea. Ooh. So welcome, Lauren. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, so we're just going to have a little chat today. It's lovely to kind of get to know you. Yes. Um, we have met previously, but we, we'll chat about all things we've learned <laughs> yes, <laughs> today. Yes, absolutely. There's been some funny ones. So first, really, let's get straight into it. So how did you come across She's in TikTok. Can you tell us the behind the scenes? Oh, I love TikTok. So um, basically what had happened is I obviously have another business, which mm-hmm. is like princess parties and things that everyone's quite familiar with. Um, and I started doing free quizzes online. So that kind of gave me like my first taste of like what the word viral meant. Um, you know, I had people joining in from Essex to New York to Spain. They were all telling me their different time zones because obviously everyone loves Disney and Harry Potter and there were the quizzes I was doing. Um, Um, And so everyone, all the kids were like, have you tried TikTok, Lauren? TikTok's so cool. And I had seen TikTok on parties, but I just thought it was like a kid thing. Um, And every time I did TikToks on parties with kids before it was a big thing, the kids didn't explain what it was. They just (laughs) was like, just wave, just wave at the camera. And I was like, oh my, I don't know what this is. And then when it got big, I obviously thought, like, what kind of videos can I do? And I was just doing the trends. I think there was the Elsa trend where you like sing and then the neighbor mm. like screamed the song <laughs> back at you. Um, but the first viral video I did was the Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging oh, yeah, so skit. That. And I was kind of like, I made it up and I was dead proud of myself. I still am. It's pinned to the top of my page. Did you make it. that costume? Um, no, my friend uh, Nat did. I, I'll have to mention his name because he'll just, he was so proud of it. Yeah. He made me a giant olive out of paper mache, <laughs> which is just brilliant. Friend goals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just ran up and down my street to the actual song from... From the movie and uh, captioned it with a great caption and it went viral and it's just ever since then I bet you got a lot of looks I did yeah yeah and everyone's like oh my gosh that's my street you like your viral videos on my street I was like it's my street as well <laughs> and do you think that's what really kind of got your page going and yeah um well obviously that was my viral video and mm-hmm. I still didn't really understand the concept of viral mm-hmm. and then after that I was kind of going through a breakup at the time so I was using it as like a get back at my ex type thing and I was like does anyone just think boys suck <laughs> like boys just so annoying <laughs> and then obviously girls are finding that really relatable yeah. I still to this day get can you help me with some dating advice oh really yeah wow. and if his name starts with J because that's quite a big thing in my life for some reason <laughs> oh it's the J girl the girl who hates J names <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> I bet you weren't expecting that were you <laughs> No, brilliant. Um, so it's clear that you have a large impact on TikTok, but how impactful is TikTok on you? Oh, that's a, oh, that's a deep question. <laughs> I know we're going deep. Um, obviously, I, I never, ever in a million years expected to have a social media career. Mm-hmm. I literally just thought having a social media presence was you look perfect, you take great pictures, which I just still to this day cannot do. I just can't make myself look aesthetic online. Um, and I just thought that was, you know, the be all and end all. And actually it showed me that if you have a good person, personality and you put yourself out there and you are different you can have that presence on on social media you don't just have to be the the perfect person yeah and what kind of content is it that you enjoy most creating is it kind of the funny videos or I see you do like the outfits of the day and yeah everything like that I saw your makeup one the other day what's your favorite I quite like the mixture I quite mm-hmm. like that I'm not niched down yeah um I like doing food videos because you know I love food and no one can ever take that away from me but then <laughs> equally when I do that video so many food lovers will comment on yeah. that video and then if I do an outfit of the day people who like my fashion sense will comment on it and I feel like all my different aspects of TikTok hit the right people yeah so I quite like that you know for everyone yeah yeah okay and what side of TikTok are you on so you kind of just mentioned this so food TikTok clean TikTok yes fashion TikTok bit of everything it's a bit of everything but my for you page is none of the stuff I do it's all dogs and Harry Potter so (laughs) like if I was to say what my favorite for you page is it's definitely Harry Potter Potter. um and yeah like obviously like fashion and makeup and stuff I do like that as well Mm -hmm. 
Um, you also do, like you mentioned, a what I eat in a day. They do really well on yes. your TikTok page. Um, but the topic of food is often triggering people. Do you face any black? Lash from any of these videos so the main comment i get which i'd obviously struggle with because it doesn't right i don't really understand it is you know um you only get nice comments because you're thin and you eat a lot mm. and uh, you know um they'll start commenting saying this girl who's a bit bigger than you all the grief she gets and obviously like i feel bad for that person but mm. that's not really my fault like yeah. you know I've, i have weight issues i've i've had to eat in disorders and things like that but I just enjoy food and I can't help that I don't mm. put weight on like other people. And I still think they look beautiful, mm. um, but I feel like a lot of pressure gets put onto me for what other people get on their what I eat in a day. Yeah, 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 I get you. And going back to food then, if you could pick one, what's your favourite food? My favourite food has to be a Sunday roll <laughs> all Ooh. day long. I just feel like it'd be my last meal on the planet. Now, I'm presuming because you're northern, you have gravy on it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I've got friends who have mayonnaise on it and I actually think, why am I friends with this person? <laughs> my friend Jodie has mayonnaise on a Sunday roast. Disgusting. With a Yorkshire pudding? Yeah. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We went Nando's yesterday and she could literally eat like a tub of mayonnaise on one chip. <laughs> and I'm a, a sauce chip. girl. Well, that's just disgusting. <laughs> Not with a Yorkshire pudding. No. Um, so just going back to more social media then, how do you feel about people dragging others down on social media together? Oh, it's awful because it just feels like you're getting somewhere with TikTok and you're having a great time on it and your personality's showing and there's just always that one person who just doesn't like it that you're doing better or they're going through something in life. Sometimes I just more than anything feel sorry for that person because I know deep down that there's something going on in that person's life, mm -hmm. which is really sad because it feels like it'll just always be a problem. Um, and I just think, like I never watch other people's TikToks and YouTubes and think, I don't like that. I'm yeah. going to comment on that and I'm going to make that person feel rubbish about their day. Like it just doesn't enter my head and I feel sorry for people that go out of their way to do that. Yeah, definitely. Do you get much on it on your Instagram as well? Do you get any kind of negative stuff on your Instagram? Or no, honestly, I, I feel really, really, really lucky that I don't get much hate on either of my platforms. But, and I do stand by this, I'm not very controversial and I like it that that way yeah. I don't talk about topics like you know the Black Lives Matter and the and the political things I just don't get into it because I've got my own opinion on things and I just don't feel like I want to get into that with all my followers and stuff I just feel like it's really unnecessary yeah definitely and I think as you're aware social media often draws a negative impact on mental health is there any advice you give to young people who are trying to grow or start their own platform oh it's so scary because initially initially you just think because obviously I have a great platform but then I see other people struggling and you, you see all the be kind and the Caroline Flack things and automatically you want to say just don't go into it it's yeah. not worth it but then I probably would just say in my opinion just don't be controversial and and out there with your your opinions just just be yourself and be mm -hmm fun and bubbly but obviously it's, it's kind of up to them that that would just be my personal opinion I'm just very Disney and very um I don't know what's the thing just I'm, I'm plain sailing I don't like to you're just fun yeah <laughs> I can't think of what the what it is like yeah. I just don't want to yeah. argue about things mm -hmm. and all that is because I know the backlash I'll get and I just yeah. don't want that no I think I think you're just fun like I go on your channel and you just laugh and oh, I think that you. that's what you need <laughs> Someone to just make you day. Yeah, I think that's what you yeah. need. I think that's what the platform's about. Hundred percent, and that's what that goes back to what I said about the the Instagram thing, where everyone thought you had to look perfect. Mm -hmm. And equally, you don't actually have to put all your rubbish things out there as well. Because I think it was Rochelle Humes that was saying she wants her Instagram to look perfect, mm -hmm. and that's great too. I just think TikTok's great to show personality rather than just looks. Yeah, as well. No, definitely. Um, okay, so we've just got some kind of other questions now. Yeah. So, what food do you love to cook? Oh, um, I'm not really a massive lover of cooking because I'm, I'm impatient. So I just like, I, I can't be doing with chopping onions really slow. I'm just like, oh, and then they look rubbish. Yeah. Um, but I think I quite like cooking with Dan, mm -hmm. uh, my partner, because obviously that's quite fun. Probably would say a Sunday roast. Yeah, with, just with gravy. Getting banging roast potatoes, you know, yeah. like duck fat and Ooh. like that makes me happy seeing yeah. a beautiful roast dinner on mm. plate. Okay, so maybe not cook then, but what's your go-to takeaway? Go-to takeaway is a Chinese all day, every day. Oh, what oh yeah. You, what you're doing? 
<laughs> do you even <laughs> how, how long have we got <laughs> um so i'd get a uh, special fried rice got a bit of prawns in there mm. prawn crackers duck spring rolls Ooh. um noodles and be- bean sprouts salt and pepper chicken oh my god sweet and sour prawns <laughs> and one of these i can't just have like you chicken have and rice you have to never go off yeah it'll last me a few days in fridge <laughs> <laughs> um, so going on to Swan now, so we're excited that we're you're joining us today. So what kind of Swan products are you loving at the moment? Oh my gosh, still, since 2020, that pink kitchen's <laughs> the best thing I've ever been gifted in my life. Literally, because obviously I work with a lot of brands yeah. now, and the pink kitchen sets will just stick with me forever. Mm. I just remember posting it on my Facebook and everyone being like, oh my God, you're so lucky, <laughs> that is beautiful. And obviously it's very chick flicky, yeah. so yeah, I think yeah. the pink kitchen will always have a special place in my heart Mm -hmm. um but obviously my new favorite color at the moment is green so anything like this kind of color so anything green would probably be my go-to now Mm -hmm. definitely okay Okay, how do you feel about the new i can't read that word (laughs) (laughs) how do you feel about the new legislation i can't say that legislation Legislation. i don't even know what that means (laughs) like it's like diy I didn't know what DIY meant. <laughs> Legislation that major food chains must provide calories to all their dishes on their menus. Will it impact your food content? I'm going to pretend I knew what that word meant in that sentence. Um, <laughs> but I quite like it because yeah. honestly, when I'm trying to be good, and it's not because I'm like, you know, I'm dieting or anything, but sometimes you're just not in the mood for bad food actually makes you so aware of, mm-hmm. like I went to Nando's and there were so many calories in the wrap and it's the sauce. You yeah. just, you don't realise. And for anyone that's really trying to be good just because you know dieting and being good links to your mental health some people just want to eat healthy food to feel good Mm -hmm. I feel like it's really beneficial for them because they can just it opens their eyes to um it works both ways I think sometimes it could be damaging to somebody Mm -hmm. because they might have an eating disorder and then it might be good to somebody who really is just trying to be good to feel good so yeah yeah. so I obviously as I was talking before I kind of know your passion as well is your other business which is princess business isn't it um so can you tell us more about your princess party business and is it hard to maintain the American accent while you're in character oh my princess (laughs) business is my baby it always will be because it's so rewarding um social media is rewarding when you hit the right people mm-hmm. um we never get bad comments on parties we just get you've made my child's dreams come true mm-hmm. um or much ch- they send us pictures of the invitation that the child's written to the character Aww. um we get pictures where they've not let go of that necklace you've give give them on their party Aww. so rewarding so beautiful um and no the american accent is my thing <laughs> like don't even ask me to do it <laughs> go on give us a little bit um, so wonderful. I absolutely love American accents. They're my favourite. <laughs> That's better than mine. Mine was that awful. But asked me to do it. an Australian one and honestly it's like it just Good sounds day, mate. like a different country. <laughs> Good day, mate. How are you doing, mate? I like it. Shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> So yeah, Americans are good. (laughs) And what, when you're dressing up as kind of the characters, what's your favourite character at the moment to dress up Oh, it has to be Cruella. Oh, the new (laughs) Disney movie for that. I just, I was so worried about it, but they just... The costumes, mm-hmm. Emma Stone, the the music, everything was amazing. And you get to go to kids' parties and be really mean to them in a fun way, which is so much more fun than being a princess. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And what are you finding the kids are liking more at the minute? Um, the kids love Encanto at the moment. Um, but obviously, I I don't play that with being, obviously, mm-hmm. with the, the representation. We like mm. to make sure the characters are represented properly. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so I'm currently trying to find staff and performers and I'm letting go a little bit (laughs) and trying to give them opportunities just like I've had Um, because it is a great opportunity to have a really good job, really rewarding and it's good pay and it's great for your mental health as well. No, definitely. Yeah. Okay, and where do you see your career going? So like, I, it's a very generic interview question, but where do you see yourself in five years? So obviously I wouldn't mind if I was still doing the same thing in five years, as long as I obviously was thinking about maybe having kids and weddings. <coughs> Dan, <coughs> if you listen to the podcast, I would like a ring. Dan, if you're listening. So those things are obviously in there. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind if I was doing the same thing 
um, in five years that I'm doing now because I love my job and I love my social media. But I am aiming more towards the radio type careers, the presenting, because mm-hmm. I've always wanted that like, yeah. type of career or acting. Mm-hmm. So something TV probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can see you doing Presenting. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and if, what, have you got anything exciting coming up this year that you can tell us about? Um, well, <laughs> Swan Kitchen is great. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm absolutely desperate to get to the Jurassic World <gasps> premiere. That is my goal this You're year. You're a massive Jurassic World fan, aren't you? <laughs> Massive Jurassic Park fan. It's my childhood. Just like Harry Potter and Disney, yeah. Jurassic Park's up there. Yeah. And it's the final movie. And the originals from the first Jurassic Park and the Jurassic World cast mm-hmm. are coming together. <gasps> Some new dinosaurs are in there. <laughs> um, so that's like my aim this year. Yeah. Jurassic World premiere and I can, I can die happy. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> so how did you... I know you said you want to go into presenting and radio. What's kind of made you want to go into that? Did you do performing arts? What was your background? So ever since I was a kid, I've always been very creative and drama, even in my personality. Like I just wasn't shy, even mm-hmm. at four years old. My mo- I-, I could sing when I was younger and I just didn't pursue it because it just gave me so much anxiety. Like my mum would pull me to the side at parties and she'd go, Auntie Cheryl and un- Uncle Mick want to hear you sing. And I'd be like, I don't want to sing, I don't <laughs> like it. And she'd always make me sing Annie tomorrow. Oh yeah. That's on a <laughs> And she made me sing it at the school plays, on holiday, at all inclusives. And I'd just cry on stage. I'd just break down and cry. <laughs> She's like, maybe we should do something else other than singing so maybe we should look at musical theatre and acting and it was just acting because I couldn't dance I've never been able to dance could just do about some cheerleading but that were about it so I started acting and that was just my, my forte I went to um, Burnley Youth Theatre because that's where I'm from Burnley um, Brunch Action Group did like shows like High School Musical James and the Giant Peach um, and I just found a, a massive love for it and then in school, um, everybody at GCSE wanted to take PE and I just couldn't think of anything worse. So I picked drama and only six people picked it and they needed eight for it to be a course, otherwise they had to cancel it. And the only other options were like, oh, food tech and PE and sewing. I was just like, I'm not good at anything. So two more people joined on, luckily. Okay, and we did good. a couple of plays at school. Mm-hmm. Um, like, not to, like, dampen the, the mood of the podcast, but I did, didn't have the greatest time at school. Like, I... I did get bullied a lot. Um, my mum was amazing with me. My dad was really helpful during school. And obviously, it was quite a confident move for me to take acting. And the re- one of the main reasons was, yes, I love acting, but two, none of the popular girls are going to take that mm-hmm. subject. So actually, they can all go do PE. And I'll be like, like with all the geeks doing drama, mm-hmm. and I love that. And my drama teacher was just the most amazing teacher I could have ever asked for. Like, mm-hmm. if all the girls fell out with me in the school, which happened quite a couple of times, because they would all, like... I mean, it was like Mean Girls. They used to call mm. them the popular group. Oh, God. Um, you know, she would sit on her lunch rather than me, like, sit in the toilet like Lindsay Lohan. She would sit in her office with me having dinner. Yeah. And she was like, have you considered going to a college that's not Burnley? Because I don't know how you feel about following all those girls to the same college. And I was like, you're so right. So I was cleaning out my bedroom and then I found this, like, Preston College leaflet. And I was like, it's a sign. It said you went to New York, Paris, London with, with the college. Um, so I went to Preston College, met all new friends. I went to New York City. Oh, wow. All the other girls went to Burnley College and yeah. I was just, like, happy with that. And literally from that point on, I've done nothing but, yeah, perform and entertain. And I've... The longer I've gone on in my life, the more I've realised that I'm more comfortable within my personality than I am putting on an act. Yeah. Whereas most people are the other way around. Yeah. Most people are like, I get to be somebody else. And the more I've gone on in life, being 24, I'm like, actually, I'm quite confident as Lauren. Yeah. So that's kind of where it came from. And you, so you said you finished college. Did, is that when you started the princess business or was it? Was there a bit of a gap between Yeah, so that? I finished college and there was a lot of pressure at college to go to university. And I was thinking all sorts. I was thinking maybe I could be a journalist because... I remember seeing Laura Whitmore had studied journalism and she was a presenter. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to do journalism. Mm-hmm. And I uh, like really bad at like coursework mm-hmm. and uni work and stuff. And my teacher was just like, Lauren, journalism, you really? <laughs> no. Um, and I just, I was too nervous to audition for drama schools. I found it too much pressure, which is weird because I usually am good under pressure. Um, so I just skipped it. And I worked for a company in Burnley from being 16 to 21, which was essentially the princess work, but in venue rather than going out to houses yeah and uh, another sub story the bosses there were just like awful really bad on your mental health I think 20 of us left in one year but it was me that loved the princess work so much I then went on to 
continue mm-hmm. to do that. And it didn't go down well. It was absolutely awful. My bosses are quite big people in the entertainment world. So really scary time for me. And there's actually another TikToker who I'm friends with called Holly Marie. Um, she's massive on TikTok, like three point something million. Wow. She went through the exact same thing with a princess company. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of how that led to princessing. And then I did the quizzes in lockdown. And then after the quizzes, TikTok. And it's all just been this meant to be path. Yeah. Do you think kind of, I know a lot of people struggle to say that lockdown helped them, but did you think lockdown helped your career on TikTok yeah. and your business? Lockdown's the best thing that could have ever happened to me. And it's so sad to say that because obviously mm-hmm. I'm very sensitive to it. People lost family members, mm-hmm. people, you know, um, you know, abusive relationships, mm-hmm. which skyrocketed in lockdown. So... When I say that, I do kind of keep it to myself as much as I can. I don't go like, oh, lockdown was amazing. But for me, really, I wouldn't have TikTok if it wasn't for lockdown. So I've got a lot to thank it for, and it was meant to be. Yeah. And And the breakup. I'm really (laughs) glad the breakup happened as well, so. It's quite an event for lockdown, then. Oh, yeah, an event for life, really. (laughs) My goodness. Um, So you're obviously big on TikTok. Have you got a lot of friends in the community? I know you mentioned Holly, but do you kind of, have you got like a little group of you? What What's? So we had a group chat going from TikTok for like a good a good nine months. A good mm-hmm. chunk of lockdown was like a, a lot of creators you would know, big creators. Uh, the group got quite toxic really fast. Mm-hmm. I think everyone was just like trying to beat each other yeah. and it just wasn't really working. But when you go to events, you're just like, oh, I know you from TikTok, you're on my mm-hmm. FYP. And they're so friendly. So mm-hmm. they're just like, oh, I've seen you and you follow each other. And then the more events you go to, the more people you meet from TikTok. Yeah. And so kind of out of social media, what is it that you like to do? So who is Lauren out of social media, out of TikTok? Do you know what? Instagram? Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm very similar. Like mm-hmm. I know it's quite cliche because like, everyone <laughs> says that. Like I'm, I'm just me, you know, I'm the same online. <laughs> but I actually am like, I mm-hmm. loved it. Disney. In my spare time, I will sit there and watch Disney movies. Um, randomly, I'm, I'm watching Waterloo Road at the moment. That's Ooh, my yeah. Throwback. I'll just watched Gossip Girl, so I like to watch series. Yeah. That's that's very fun. Um, I like to go to cosplay events, mm-hmm. like um, conventions and stuff. Yeah. Um, Do you dress up for them? Yes, always. <laughs> Any event I ever go to, I think. I'm going to go extra here. I'm going to dress up. (laughs) Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So I'm very similar Mm -hmm. to what I am online. Like I love going for food. Yeah. Yeah. Love, love, love food. Where's your go-to restaurant then at the minute? Oh, do you know what? I'm loving TGI Fridays at the moment. Oh, good chat. Have you ever had the Jack Daniels sesame strips? Yeah. They are next level. (laughs) Nice. Honestly. Yeah. But if I like something, I'll go like 10 times (laughs) until I find a new place to eat. (laughs) I'll put myself off it before I find somewhere new. So obviously you're quite a big presence now on social media. Do you get spotted a lot outside of it? Yeah, it's the strangest thing. Like you think, oh, compared to my friends who've got millions of followers, like I won't get recognised. I've only got 350. And honestly, everywhere you go, like Dan doesn't believe me. I go, watch this, Dan. It happens in supermarkets, <laughs> restaurants. That's someone will say, I love your content. Yeah. Sometimes I just don't know what to say. I'm just like, yeah. thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, bye. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like sometimes they'll say like, oh, you're the J girl. Mm-hmm. You're the olive girl. You're the what I eat in a day girl you always get different titles Mm -hmm. I think the weirdest place I've ever been recognized was probably the gym Mm because it was just my local gym I was sweating my head off it was only the other day day. um and um yeah she was just like Lauren (laughs) like in the middle like after my class after the gym and I was just like hi can I have a picture with you I was like you're joking (laughs) I'm like a beetroot, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I was like, maybe we, I, I'll come back when I've done my makeup, maybe. Yeah. Or at least a glowy look, yeah. like bright red. <laughs> my goodness. So yeah, I know you've got your TikTok channel and your um, Instagram, and I know you've got YouTube as well. Is YouTube something you kind of want to do more of? YouTube is hard, yeah. so hard. Ask any TikToker, you know, going from a one minute video of, this is what I'm wearing today and it yeah. gets 100,000 views and you're like, how? <laughs> like, why are you so interested in me wearing Primark jeans mm-hmm. to then go into YouTube and also trying to get the public to watch 15 minute videos when mm-hmm. they can just scroll through TikTok yeah. and watch vlogs. Really difficult, but obviously with the, the passion I've got for presenting mm-hmm. and you start to realise that there's in, lots of individual people within your following who are really invested in you as a person mm-hmm. and they're just like diehard fans of yours, which is hard to you know get the grasp of you like why do you like me um but yeah like I do it for them yeah and I do it for my career and also want to do a podcast Mm -hmm. to help with like the radio thing and stuff yeah I think most TikTokers would say like TikTok's an amazing platform everyone's really grateful for it but they're all using it to boost something they've always been passionate Mm -hmm. about like Holly is boosting it to get a makeup career yeah 
everyone's using it for some reason. And do you feel like you have the same audience throughout them platforms? Or would you say maybe Instagram's a little different? Are they the same kind of people? Or? I feel like anyone that's subscribed to your YouTube channel and anyone that follows you on Instagram is invested in you as a person. Mm-hmm. Whereas TikTok could be 100,000 people who just liked one of your viral videos and thought, oh, follow her off the back of it. Yeah. They might not have even seen any more of your videos. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, anyone that's gone, oh, like off TikTok, onto Instagram, I'll follow her and taking that time yeah. usually really likes your content. Yeah. And with, so I know you said you've had a few viral video, videos, especially the Angus Bangs one. Do you find it weird kind of what goes viral compared, do you think maybe... You just never know. You never know. It, you never know. Like you could plan content like so much. And when I went to the NFL games last year with Dan, he's mad on NFL and American football. Mm-hmm. I did a vlog and I was like, so me and Dan went to the NFL and it got like, what, 50,000 views? And then I did a video in the queue where I was like, guys, I'm at the NFL and it's so American. I glitter on my face. It's like um, how to lose a guy in 10 days. Yeah. Oh my gosh, like <laughs> two, three million views later. Wow. Americans commenting on it, NFL players, the Jaguars were commenting on it, like um, American food companies. Mm-hmm. It was just the maddest thing. Wow. I wasn't even going to film that. It was just an on the spot random. random video. Really? So... I know you said that one was random, but do you kind of plan your content or is it some random, some planned? No, a lot of people, like when you're in, let's say you speak to other TikTokers, like you'll say, oh, I really don't know what videos to do. And they'll all say to me the same thing. Lauren, you're so lucky because it's your sporadic videos that do well. Um, so in the moment, if I'm at the McDonald's drive thru I'll just be like, guys, I'm at the McDonald's <laughs> drive thru I'm going to try the chicken Big Mac. That'll do better than me planning yeah oh, tomorrow I'm going to film this and tomorrow I'm going to film that. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like a pressure to kind of get a, s- a number of videos, <clears throat> say, out a week or a day? Do you feel pressure into doing that? or do you? Tr- no, so do I don't. Like- I think I think when, when you rely on it as a career, mm-hmm. I can understand the pressure. But because I've got my own business as well, mm-hmm. um, I do them quite casual. But when you see your following growing, that's when the pressure starts to come because mm-hmm. you're like, the, the harder I work, the more my following's going up. Yeah. And yeah, I can, but I can understand the pressure when someone's doing it as a full-time career. Yeah. Getting, getting brands to work with them, getting jobs, going to events. You just want more and more and yeah. more. Yeah, I think, I think like you say, it's a lot of pressure if it's your full time. And I know you've got your business as well. Do you find it difficult to kind of balance them both? Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough because I always look at Molly May and I think, wow, she's absolutely smashing it. But all the content's the same. Yeah. On all platforms, she is... Guys, my, I'm, I am making my life look aesthetic. Mm-hmm. It's not like she goes on YouTube and she does fancy dress like I do. You know, she her content, she can work hard at that brand. Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm trying to work at family content as well as working at girly content and relatable content. Mm-hmm. So I, sometimes I do wish the two combined, but I'm very lucky that I've got something to rely on. Yeah. It's quite difficult to balance the two. Just, I, just sometimes like, Sometimes I envy creators where they just get to focus on one thing, but then other times I, they probably look, up, look at me and think, oh, wow, she's got her other business, so there's no pressure on her. So works both ways, really. Yeah, and you seem quite entrepreneurial. Is that something you've always kind of wanted to do? Um, <laughs> gosh, you know, owning my own business used to freak me out. And do you know what it still does? Like, I think anyone that's thinking of setting up their own business, there's one thing that scares you, and it's the money side of things, mm-hmm. the tax, the HMRC, all those words, they're just horrendous. Oh I wouldn't have a clue. I have, a ca- I have an accountant. He deals with everything. <laughs> I just do not know what I'm doing. Um, so I've never been entrepreneur. <laughs> I can't say that word either now. Um, so entrepreneur. Um, I wouldn't say I'm a Stephen Barlett, um, <laughs> <laughs> even though I have, I have a massive crush on him. Like I, like I Do you watch him on Dragon's Day? He's amazing. <laughs> Just how he gives Theo, is it, the, what's he called? What's he called? Who he gives grief to all the time? Peter. No, no. Tuka. Tuka. He gives Tuka yeah. grief all the time. I love it. I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not him. Like I'm, I, it, it came from being treated that badly um, at my old business. Mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't know anything else right now. I'm, I'm 21. I've got no other, like, I didn't have social media or anything like that. I'm just going to kind of do the same thing. Because um, I owned a business with them as well that went out to parties. So I had a little bit of an inkling at how we'd been running things. Um, so it just came from there, really. And mm-hmm. I was... I think I used to work at my old job 10 till 10 at night. So 10 in the morning till 10 at night. And I think I'd earn, like... 60 pounds was on like under minimum wage at the time which I had no idea about um and then I remember going out on one party and getting 90 pound cash in hand for an hour oh God. and I was just like oh I don't know what to do with that amount of money I've not done anything today yeah like bearing in mind like even though I started at 10 at my old job I'd get in for eight mm-hmm. because what they required us to do before the party started was way longer than the mm-hmm. half an hour bracket they gave us 
Um, so I used to work from like eight in the morning till 11 at night, mm-hmm. should I say. It was so many hours for the money. So yeah, uh, went out as that one time as Cinderella and every time I earned money, I just bought a costume and I bought another one. And I have a lot of costumes but now. But the costumes are expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. Um, my, everyone, everyone still to this day compliments my first costume, which was my modern Cinderella costume. That was my cheapest costume I've ever bought in the whole company because it was my first mm-hmm. one and I didn't have the money. So it was £60 on eBay and it is the most beautiful costume you've ever you seen. you still got it to this day? Still got it to this oh, day. And I bet the wigs are quite expensive as well. Well, I mean, <laughs> I've got to give a shout out to Holly Mary Makeup right now because <laughs> before her, I was spending £300 a wig. Wow. She can buy one off eBay and Amazon for £19 and she'll make it look like Disney World. Wow. She's the bestest <laughs> friend ever. <laughs> she saves me so much yeah. money. Um, so, you know, as the business has gone on, I've learned how to save money. I've learned how to not buy unnecessary things. I've learned what my customers like to see. Mm -hmm. If you walked into my attic where all my costumes are, though, you would be like, mind blown. Mm -hmm. They are insane. I'm so proud. Do you do kind of, do you you notice it's like a specific age range? It's like, do you can't, or it can be any age? Oh, it, um, sometimes we've got one-year-old parties, you know, we did Jessie Lingard's little girl's party when she was one and Mm -hmm. then two and then three. Um, we've also done like, 11 year olds parties I've done a 15 year olds party before they just had Lauren though yeah TikTok Lauren uh-huh. <laughs> they, I was like, they went you look famous actually you look well cool and they were like your shoes are so big they're like the Spice Girls Ooh. so I've done yeah all different age ranges yeah <laughs> um, and sometimes I find that older kids like me more Oh, wow. Yeah, and do you think that's because maybe they've seen you on TikTok? Yeah, they think TikTok's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, um, even though some of them are not even allowed it and they're underage, they're yeah. just like, "I've seen you on my mum's phone. <laughs> You're so cool." Do you find it quite difficult to kind of so say if you've just done like a children's party and then you're going to go home and film a TikTok that maybe is not relatable to the party, maybe a little bit more adult content? Yeah. Do you find that a little bit more difficult? Well, I always think if 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 those children are watching my content, then mm-hmm. that's on the parent because they are they're not supposed to have the app. They are underage. Um, but I wouldn't put anything like about boys and stuff on YouTube because yeah. I know that kids are allowed YouTube they Mm -hmm. have access to that so I do try and keep my con I don't swear and I'm I'm very family friendly but also I will talk about um relatable boy things you can probably imagine like what sort of things you know (laughs) um things that girls suffer um and need to know about Mm -hmm. with me being older I just love inspiring younger girls Mm -hmm. because I just feel like there's a lot of people on the app who maybe aren't as inspiring and and it's easy for girls to follow that path. So it, I do feel like, not blowing my own trumpet, it is nice to have inspirational people on the app. And I do my absolute best on parties and off parties to make sure I inspire people. Mm-hmm. And I know you mentioned about your For You page, but what is it kind of, what are the creators you like watching? Oh, gosh. Um, oh, I can never think of creators' names off the top of my head. I love, I love American content because mm-hmm. I feel like they're much, much more fun and cheesy than UK content. So there's a girl called Ali Yost. And there's a girl called Abby Herbert. Abby Herbert's got 10 million followers. And she's just so fun. She, again, she's very inspirational. She doesn't mm-hmm. swear. She doesn't have to talk about controversial topics. Mm-hmm. But she, and th- those type of creators are my favourite. Mm-hmm. And just kind of going more into Instagram now. How do you feel that Instagram... Because I've noticed recently Instagram are really focusing a lot on the reels. Um, trying to kind of copy... Not copy, but probably copy yeah kind of tiktok do you find yourself doing more reels now on instagram oh they just they just don't give me the same feel as, mm. as tiktok i mm-hmm. find them like i'll post a, a tiktok um a tiktok onto reels that's done really well on tiktok and it's gone viral mm-hmm. and we got like 100 views on reels and it just feels like a lot of pressure for the reward mm-hmm. whereas when you put pressure on yourself with tiktok you just the reward's amazing it's natural isn't it yeah you could grow to a million so fast if you put the work in Mm -hmm. whereas instagram's a graft yeah do you find it harder to grow followers on instagram yeah Mm -hmm. i kind of just rely on tiktok and just think you know the people that like my content will just come over Mm -hmm. and if they don't they don't yeah Yeah. (laughs) and do you think that's the same with youtube or yeah youtube like i said before youtube and the podcast are more um a bit more of an entrepreneurial (laughs) thing for me just you know I want to be a presenter I want to be on radio Mm -hmm. like Jordan North's a massive inspiration to me Mm -hmm. because he just Burnley big (laughs) up Burnley and I was like that could be me (laughs) Uh, so YouTube and podcasts are very strategic Mm -hmm. this is for my career like Molly May says all the Mm -hmm. time she takes on certain brands for her career and Mm -hmm. stuff like that I always go back to Molly May because I do actually find her really inspirational Mm -hmm. I know she gets a lot of stick but she's just she she has worked a lot harder than a lot of people um and I find her inspiring and she always says she does things in a Mm -hmm. strategic way yeah TikTok's not strategic TikTok's just fun just random isn't it TikTok fun and random that's why but it just does help so much with 
growing on other like mm-hmm. growing in other aspects of your life mm-hmm. makeup you know I, I follow a guy in America who does Harry Potter content and it's all he does he just loves and breeds Harry Potter and he got invited to the Fantastic Beast premiere and he was stood next to Jude Law and I was just like go you <laughs> yeah you go like that's amazing <laughs> that's gonna be you at Jurassic World yes it will I see it for you <laughs> Chris Pratt <laughs> please <laughs> Oh no, what's he called? What's he called? Sam Neill? Oh my God. If I stood anywhere near them, I think I'd fail. <laughs> I would. I think, I can imagine you on a TikTok there. Just when, Chris just Pratt. this why I love Disney so much because when it's part of your childhood and then you still like it mm. as an adult, you're just like, this is my whole life. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's what the guy from who did the Harry Potter content felt like as mm. well. well. How's like that with Toy Story? Because I think it was like, ni- was it late 90s that came out? Yeah. And then it just kept going. Toy Story going. came out before I was born, <laughs> can you believe? 1995 and I was born in 97. And I literally cried like a baby at number four. It wasn't even fun. Why they had to end it like that, it was traumatic. <laughs> Actually traumatic, my little sister were looking at me like, you're weird. Like, why are you crying at Woody? It's not normal. Mm-hmm. Eve loved it that much, I called my dog Woody straight after. It's <gasps> yeah. a great name. It's what great dog name. have you got? Cavapoo, Sean. Ooh. He's amazing. What's that? A mi- Cavalier, Poodle, and a Bichon. Oh, <laughs> bit of everything. <laughs> <Very> creative now. <laughs> but I called him Woody and he's just so cute. Aww. Say, Lauren, we're going to have some afternoon tea now. Are you excited? Music to my ears. I'm starving. <laughs> are you, before we start, are you a scone or a scone kind of girl? A scone. A, sc- oh. a scone. A, oh, I'm going to have a scone. I'm going to have a, I'm a scone. It's a scone. Oh, I'm going to have quite, a scone. She's quite posh. That's posh. Is it? Or a scone posh? Scones. Oh, I'm posh. going to have a scone. Oh. I'm going to have a scone. It's the I'm gonna, have a, I'm gonna have a scone. We're gonna have a scone. Yeah, and I think, mm. what is it? I think, oh, what, do you do jam or cream first? Oh, I just get it all on there. Yeah, I don't think I'm so particular. <laughs> I'm trying to think how I, would, how I would eat it. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna say cream first. Oh, yeah. I think that's, there's like a Cornish way and a Devon way, isn't there? And I think the Cornish way, if I'm right, is cream first. I might be wrong. <laughs> Sorry. It's just food. <laughs> I just love food. <laughs> Oh, are you oh, a current? probably like a current? non-current guy. I'm with you. Even though we just had a biscuit at the Lowry and it had raisins in it. Bloody lovely. Oh, it was gorgeous, wasn't it? Loved it. Who knew? It was, who knew? I could like raisins. <laughs> had an almond flavour to it. Oh, it was, it was good. It was good. We nearly nicked one, didn't we? Well, we kept ordering into... coffees just for the cookie. We should have just bought the cookie on its own. <laughs> should have done. We'll get some after this. Yes, 100%. <laughs> okay, so we're going to have some afternoon tea now, so I'm excited. Woo! <laughs> This is my favourite bit. Oh. Food. Oh. Are we rolling? Yeah. Oh, it's pink. <laughs> Nothing. Oh, yeah, this is my... I've chosen a motivation tea. Thought I'd be bougie. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's purple, so it's, you know, it's good vibes. Oh, it it's looks not a green good. one. I've just gone very plain Jane with English breakfast. Oh, my. my this, oh, what does this... It smells like motivation. Mm. Thank you. Interesting. Oh. Nice. I'm very excited for this food. And food me. is my favourite thing ever. And me. What do you have milk with your motivation tea? No, I think it's just tea. Oh. Tea and motivation. What's the smell? <laughs> give, it, I'll give it a sniff. It's, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's like black currant Oh. Interesting. What's your go to tea normally? Um, I, um, I like. The, is it twinings or twinnings? Why can I say no words <laughs> Twi- today? <gasps> twinings. Oh my yes. gosh. Um, I like like the glow twinings tea and the sleep and the detox. Oh. They're my favourites. But I am a coffee gal usually. Oh, I've just had too good. much coffee to... <gasps> this looks so, this looks so good. Oh my Thank God. Thank you. Have you seen the menu? <laughs> my God. <gasps> Banana, milk, chocolate and caramel. Ga... Ga... <laughs> what Thank is you. going on today? Gatto. Gatto. We were talking earlier, weren't we, about words we're not sure how to say. Words we don't know what it stands for oh, that and words it. we can't say. What were the words we can't say? Now entrepreneurial. Been... Entrepreneurial. And what was that word we couldn't say earlier? Legislation. That one. And then another one. What was the cheese you like? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I get loads of grief on TikTok because I say words wrong. One was, um, I, I called camembert, camembert. <laughs> <laughs> There's birds on the end. Like, how am I supposed to know that? And then I'm um, quite known for the g- Greek gyro, which is apparently a gyros. Gyros. 
Giros. Giros. So why? Oh. Been educated. Oh. I thought it was gyro. Are we digging in? <laughs> okay, what does it say on the menu? What have we got? We've Read got, out the course. Um, smoked mackerel pate, cucumber and brioche. Ooh. Roast red pepper hummus. Oh, this is dead posh, this. Goat's cheese and mint. Coronation chicken. <laughs> 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 Yeah, Weren't you an extra on I'm Coronation <laughs> Street? <laughs> All right. Hey, Emma's no better. <laughs> no, I can't say words either. <laughs> um, braised beef fritter. Should we try Ooh. the sandwiches first? Yes. I don't know what's what. To... You Ooh, go first. What is that? I think it's got a... It's, it's got a gherkin on it. I'm having it. Do you take the gherkin out of the burgers? No, I'm McDonald's. a gherkin lover. Mm. Do you, not, are you, do you not like gherkins? Would you like my gherkins? Yeah, I do, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love gherkins. I'm really annoying because Dan likes gherkins. And I just feel like you need a partner who doesn't like them so you can nick them all. Mm. I can't believe you just let me have it. I don't know. We're friends now. We're friends now. <laughs> oh, it's got Parmesan cheese on and all. I'm at his mint, I'm that. <laughs> it's because you're eating. You're eating in a microphone. Who wants to do that, man? <laughs> right. Oh, I've looked for the all all <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. Mmm, what is that? Which one? Mmm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the pate. Mmm. Macro pate. That's not on here. Is it the top one? No. No. Because I saw, is it on yours? No, no this is the tick. No. Can't see gherkin on here. Mm. Oh, that was well good, that. Mm. I like that. How did the microphone people feel listening to me in the headphones? I feel great. <laughs> How do you feel about ASMR TikTok? Mm. Um, it's not for me. for me, you know. No. Honestly, it goes through me. I can't stand people eating. It's when people go, it's... Oh, it's when they go, like, like, on a, like, oh. on a microphone, and I'm just like, like, they stare at you in the camera, and they're just like that, and I'm like, whoa. Oh. At two in the morning, Creepy. ASMR with me, I'm like, Creepy. I still followed one of them, and I was like, why did you do that? Now TikTok's going to think you like all of it. <laughs> Um, I eat really fast, by the way, so mm. if you're on a time schedule, you're eight. No, no, go it's in. Gonna be go going in. Like go in. Well, so what did we rate that one out of ten? Um, that was actually a solid ten for me with a gherkin. Mm. Can't okay. go wrong with a gherkin. Double now, gherkin. Double, double gherkin. You gave me, we, are, we actually are friends, and then you gave me a gherkin. <laughs> it's true friendship. Right, this is definitely sp- smoked mackerel pack. Oh, this is it. I love a cucumber. Oh, my gosh. Okay. You, you didn't even give me a cucumber. That's well out of order. Oh, <laughs> Would you like my one in set? Oh, fine, thank you. <laughs> is this an all-in-one or no? <laughs> not an all-in-one. My gob is not that big. <laughs> okay. Mmm. Mmm, it's cool. Yeah, nice. Fishy. A lot of bread. <laughs> it is a lot of bread, isn't it? Mmm. Brioche is dead light. Thick and chewy. Isn't it? <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna choke, man. Stop. I start saying man when I'm nervous because I'm eating in front of people. <laughs> you can't even eat it, lady. I love cucumber. Mm. Do you know, gherkin's just vinegar cucumber. Mmm. It is. I don't mind gherkin. I'm not. I don't know. I just didn't fancy it today. This one's nice, though. Maybe a little bit too much bread. Mmm. But. Oh well. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say the other thing. I still don't know what that other thing... Yes, that was the braised beef fritter. I it was beef. Yeah. I thought it was fish. Gherkin mustard and smoked cheddar. It wasn't even... wasn't even parmesan. <laughs> <laughs> You're close. <laughs> close, close. Fish is sometimes like beef, though, isn't it? <laughs> is it? <laughs> it's not, is it? nothing like it, is it? It's Avignon. It's what Avignon. <laughs> Do you know, I'm a... Um, I'm funny about coronation chicken. I don't like the colour of it. I'm dead funny about it. You know when you see it in supermarkets and it's just like a bright yellow sandwich? Mm. Uh, the queen is my idol in life. Is this what posh people eat? Is it? It was invented for coronation. Was it? No, it wasn't. Yeah. I don't know whether to believe you because you've had me on <laughs> 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 it. I feel like it was made of coronation street, personally. Oh, it's all over me. Oh, I've got it what did you rate the last one? Wasn't it wasn't one for me. That. No. Too much bread. Too much fish. Mm. Yeah. Hey, that's banging that. Mm. It's nice. 
That's what we're supposed to be doing, rating, rating afternoon tea. Is that, is that the, the vibe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, that, that's mm. nine out of ten for me, that one. Mm. I'm not a big fan of brown bread. Oh, what are you not? No. Good for the gut, hun. Good for the gut. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm way ahead of you now. I'm diving in. You go. Right, I'm this trying to one. This is the last one now. Red pepper hummus goat's cheese mint. I mean, the mints, the mints giving me dodgy vibes, not going to lie. What are you like with goat's cheese? Um, what am I like with cheese? I just love it. All kinds. Oh, I'm not sure on goat's cheese. Go for it. Mmm. A bit nice. Mmm. Come on. You can do that. Do you want me to tell you about the coronation chicken? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's good. Food that banks up the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953. Ooh. So it actually is. <laughs> Royal right. family, I thought you were taking Mick out of it. <laughs> With posh. Yeah. Oh, that's that's lovely, that is. Yeah, that one's really nice. Yeah. I like the goat's cheese. Mm. Mm. I love cheese. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I always say, if there could be one food that had no calories in it, it wouldn't even be chocolate for me, it'd be cheese. Mm-hmm. I just feel like it makes any meal better. Do you like halloumi? Yeah, do mm. I. Do I. Oh, mm-hmm. it's the only reason I go Nando's. I like the. I feel like I feel like Nando's invented halloumi. They did. They did. But then with halloumi, you have to have it straight away, otherwise it gets too hard. Oh, that is cheesy. That it is. Yeah. Yeah. I like. No, we'll give it a go. (laughs) (laughs) You're so gonna put that down. Come on. And your brain told you you wanted the goat's cheese. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm gonna say that the gherkin thing was my favourite. The first one. Mm -hmm. How's your motivational tea? Mm -hmm. Have you tried it? No, I haven't. Probably why I'm. Cheese and motivation tea. <laughs> I was wondering, is there any milk? Mm. Oh my gosh, motivational tea with Lauren. <laughs> no, no. Oh, I've gone to pour it, but there's no milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, did you not feel how empty it was? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not really sure what I'm drinking there, oh. actually. I can't work it out. <laughs> It is. Now, see, you're holding it very fancy like this. I struggle holding it like this. Because it's tiny. <laughs> I've really got big hands, so I struggle. <laughs> mm. Mm. I can't go wrong with an English practice. You're really motivated. Right. right, what are we going for now? A scone. Are you a scone girl? I'm a scone girl. A scone? Mm. A scone. But I find scone more posh. Can't be. But I am from Stoke, so. Like, oh, it's posh. And you're saying scone? I didn't think of it like that. Yeah, you're posh. Oh. Scone's like the <laughs> mank northern way to say it, I would say. Where are you from? I'm from the lovely Stoke on Trent. Near Alton Towers. No, it's not near. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is near Alton Towers. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Have you been to Alton Towers? Have I? Well, love it. Mm. Well, good. I can imagine you like it. It's very. Although, you queue for. Oh, yeah. Ages, don't yeah. you? You really do. Yeah. It's a great but It's good that we got it around the corner. So you're from Burnley. Are we born yeah. in Burnley? Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> We've just got a Starbucks and it's the <laughs> highlight of everyone that lives in Burnley. <laughs> like, Burnley's on the map now. It's got a Starbucks. I love your accent, though. It's a proper yeah. Northern accent. Yeah. Every time I go to events, everyone's like, you should set up a podcast because your accent's really good and mm. it's, it's bizarre, like... I've always hated my accent. No, I think it's great. Yeah, but... Oh, we have. Hey, don't matter how you say it, does it? <laughs> Still put the same product on. But then if you turn it upside down... You notice through this podcast, I've got more and more Burnley. <laughs> the more comfortable I've got. <laughs> Bloody love it. I'm glad we're not having a drink, because I feel like you'd, we'd get worse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I only need one. <laughs> That's why I barely drink. <laughs> What's your go-to drink of choice? Um, right, depends. It depends how fancy I'm dressed, honestly. So if I'm uh, if I'm having a chilled night at home, like we're all getting drunk in the house, it's a it's a wine, it's a vodka. Mm-hmm. If I'm out, I'll drink gin and I'll uh... pure gin. No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> Who do you think I am? <laughs> I know I'm from Burnley. <laughs> Wow. Um, no, gin and lemonade. Mm. If I'm being good, gin, gin and slimline tonic. Oh. But oh, Dan goes mad because he's like, Lauren, you take it, mate, now, because gin, gin and slimline tonic is like the most expensive drink in yeah. the bar. So he goes mad. 
what's a what's a gin in Burnley costing you? Um, do you know what? Quite cheap. Mm. Yeah, it's when we it's when we venture over to where Dan's from, which is Salford. It gets a bit more expensive. Mm. Um, so a gin in Burnley is probably like three, four pounds. In Manchester, it's like six, seven, eight. Mm. That's like stove. It's yeah, about three pounds. I love a good cocktail. Have you ever been to Tattoo in Manchester? No, but I've they heard do of the them. best cocktails mm-hmm. ever. Ooh. Where yeah. is it in Manchester? <laughs> Just in Manchester. <laughs> it's in Manchester. <laughs> yeah. What a question, Emma. I mean, I barely know where I am right now. <laughs> Sorry. Still looking for my car. The last time I met up with you guys, you you were in the car park when I followed you to. I think I walked around the block two times before I followed. Say I'm not working with Swan now. <laughs> I'll say I've lost my car. It's because you put your registration in the payment meter and it was like, oh, <laughs> it's not found. <laughs> oh, it's broken. <laughs> Sorry for people that don't know it's an inside story. <laughs> yes. I always lose my car now because... My little Fiat 500 used to have like black straps on it. It was very mm-hmm. standout. Now I've just got a black car and it just can't find it anywhere. Mm. I've put too much <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> Isn't it hard to eat and speak at the same time? I know. Oh, I've already made a mess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you rate the scones? Mm. Scones. Yeah, bang mm. Mm. 10 They're out of 10. They're really good. Um, I like any food that has like, that's crispy. Mm. That's crispy on top. They're really well good. good. So good. I'm going to try something else. I Although think. I could just eat that with cream. Not I'm not jam. a massive jam, jam lover. Oh. I'm a, I'm a custard donut over a jam donut kind of girl. Which is a very unpopular anymore. opinion. Have you ever had a custard donut? Mm-mm. So good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Mm. Mm. Everyone behind the camera. No <laughs> passion. You just went, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well better than a jam donut. I'm going to try these. Do we know what these are? Does mm-hmm. it say on the menu? Here's the menu. Um, no, it's I'm staying away from the mic. Oh. I can't do that to you. <laughs> oh, it's banana milk chocolate and caramel gato. gato. Yeah, that's doing it for now, me. Now, gato that one. throws me off because there's an X at the end. That shouldn't there's be no gato. There's no need, is there? No. <laughs> no. And I've got dyslexia, so Not it really the doesn't help. The of them. No. <laughs> doesn't help people. <laughs> right, I'm going in. I don't know what's what, but... My favourite thing in any dessert is rhubarb. Oh. And there's a rhubarb something. Do you like a rhubarb gin? That's my go-to gin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like a rhubarb gin. And actually, a really good gin is blueberry. Oh, no. Very I'm unpopular, but it's so good. Oh. I went to a bar once and that's all, the only flavour they had left. So I was like, Ugh. and then I had it and it's one of my favourites now. Mm. Oh, but yeah. You need to try that. Do I? Yeah. <sighs> um, it's kept me scone down me. It's the, what is it? Banana milk chocolate and caramel gato. Oh, Banana. Mm. I need it. It's really good. <clears throat> mm. So the best banana dessert I've ever had is Miller and Carter. Mm. And they do... Um, what's the dessert with banana? Banana, yeah. banana Banoffee pie. Oh, mm. so good. Yeah, it's the best dessert I've ever had. And that's a bold statement. I love a tiramisu. Oh, tiramisu. is that coffee? Yeah. I Ooh. don't like coffee, but I like tiramisu. <laughs> weird, I know. I know it's weird. <laughs> Wow. I know. Or I like that's controversial, you know. I know. Or like a cheesecake. Do you like a cheesecake? I love a cheesecake, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. But I just feel like I like the biscuit more than the cheese, and that just mm-hmm. defeats the point of it being a cheesecake. I like biscuit cakes. Mm-hmm. I feel like bottom. sometimes in a cheesecake they put too much cheese in. It's a bit much. There's no cheese in it. <laughs> is there cheese in a cheesecake? Yes. <laughs> no, there isn't, is there? <laughs> I'm <tripling>. <laughs> <laughs> Cheese. You put like soft cheese. It's soft yeah, cheese. but it's not like it's cheddar. cheddar. That's cheese. <laughs> it's still cheese in it. I never said parmesan. I never said cheddar. Let's cut that bit out. Mum's gonna think that. That's a meme. No cheese in cheesecake. Anyway. So yeah, there is cheese in cheesecake and it's just a bit much for me, Anna. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to eat my cake. Um, Do you know what that reminds me of? Mm -hmm. 
those desserts you get in like Turkey, like when you're on, when you're an all inclusive. I see it, yeah. And they've got like that, like sponge in the middle and that jelly on top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I'm um, I'm digging into another one. <laughs> princess Poppy. <laughs> I love that like Princess Poppy. That's brilliant. All right, okay. What is, is it that? Just, is it a macaroon? I'm gonna say that. No. <laughs> no, that finger in the yeah. top. <laughs> You're killing me. You're killing me. Look, nothing left. <laughs> Right, I think Emma's the main culprit here. It ain't bloody me. It's you. What's the thing on the top then? I think it's just like like moose. <laughs> um, no, it's 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 not. <laughs> macaroons are like <laughs> macaroon shit. Like. <laughs> How do you even explain a macaroon? And I'm sure... Not that, anyway. No. <laughs> a macaroon's not cold. Yes. <laughs> I think you found your first guest for your podcast, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> podcast title. <laughs> Saying words wrong. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to lie. That's not doing it for me. Try it. Go on. It's very, um... Ooh. Very, um... Tart. Oh, it's really not for me, that. What's the flavours? I mean... The Lowry food is beautiful. <laughs> it's just a, it's a preference. Let me try this one. Mm. What is that? What mm. what can you describe that as? I feel like I'm on, on I'm a celebrity. <laughs> what with afternoon tea? <laughs> I could see you on I'm a celebrity. Oh, do you know what? I could as well. Mm. <laughs> because I'd be so bad at it. So bad at it. Like, it annoys me because I, I wouldn't want to be Helen Flanagan. <laughs> oh, like, did you all remember Helen Flanagan yeah, on I'm a celebrity? she got every child, didn't she? So bad, but... Equally, like if a spider is, one tiny spider is in the corner of my room, that's it. I have full meltdown, <laughs> full blown meltdown. Do you get your boyfriend to move it? He won't, <laughs> he's scared as well. Oh. That's just, honestly, that is the one thing I'd say that's wrong about Dan. Would you... I need to meet someone who can get bugs for me. I've got a really big fear and it's ladybugs. So you can imagine if I'm scared of a ladybug, what I'm like with a spider, <laughs> really bad. <laughs> Yeah. I can imagine. What about snakes? You like snakes and stuff um, like that? No, snakes is one I'm not that scared of, mm. weirdly. Even though they can eat your hole. So I don't know why I'm not that scared <laughs> of them. My main fear in life... A snake can eat your hole? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, not like a little baby one. <laughs> but like a big... <laughs> but like a big, big snake could okay. just go and you'd see the body like lying in it. Oh. Yeah. I see My biggest say. fear ever, though, like, ever in the world, like, is a crocodile. I am absolutely petrified. Bad. Have and sharks seen, as well. Have you seen one in real life? No, I've never. Mm-hmm. But I dream about them quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so my mum, my mum found that out that I had a fear of crocodiles, so she started putting crocodile horror movies on when I was a kid. Lake Placid. Terrified. <laughs> Have you seen that movie where she feeds it to cows? And No, she feeds the cows to the, the crocodile. You sounded very northern then. Did I? <laughs> Well, I went, I went to uni in Leeds, so I kind of used to the know of it. But it's me. We get mistaken for Leeds. They miss out words. Like what? Like put into bin. I'm going to the shop. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to the shop. To the shop. Well, who's got time to say two? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I get it. Everyone's busy. It takes a while. <laughs> um, that's probably been my least favourite thing so far. Yeah. Is that on the rhubarb one? It is. <laughs> I love rhubarb. <laughs> I think it could be. Or could that? Oh no. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, no. That just looks like an egg. And it's giving <laughs> me the egg. It looks like yolk. <laughs> it looks like a really perfect poached egg that I'm going to like do the Instagram thing to and cut into it. I've got an obsession with putting poached eggs on my Instagram story and cutting into them. So I just think it's so pleasing. <gasps> Have you got one of our egg boilers? No. I'll send you one. Please do. You can make your perfect poached egg and then you can just put it in. I'll so not like you. that then? No. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> not, <laughs> that is a hard <laughs> boiled egg. <laughs> oh yeah, I'd love that. Where are they? You don't have a poached egg one, do you? <laughs> it's two in one. Oh. Game changer. <laughs> Shout out Swan. <laughs> yes, go on Swan. <laughs> Right. What's your biggest fear? 
We're getting deep here. We're getting deep. <laughs> Mine's crocodiles. And spiders are probably... Pro- oh, and, and clowns. Oh. Really big fear of mine is that since I watched Tim Curry in, in It as a, as a kid. Mum. What do you doing? My big, I'm not a big fan of heights. I'm not. Like, I don't mind... It's just mm. edges and windows that are mm. like. So I went up. I've never been abseiling. No, That's awful. I don't think I could do that. It's just I went up this massive building once when I went to Australia, and it had just sheer glass windows, and things like that freaked me out because you think, what happens if the ga- glass just breaks? Yeah, I'm You're going to that, um, London in the sky in a few weeks. No, where you get strapped in over London and eat your, eat your oh, dinner no. and have drinks. No, I wouldn't like that. No, I wouldn't like that. by the way, <clears throat> you take the yolk off. <laughs> <laughs> What's around the side? Joke. What's around the side? Them crispy bits. <laughs> no. <Nuts. laughs> <laughs> that is really good though, on its own. Not for me, that. No. <laughs> Try it on its own. You won't regret it. Take the nuts off and take the yolk off, and you'll really like it. Okay. So, are you scared of? Are you scared of anything else that's like? Like a thing rather than a... Not really. No? Not spiders? I just don't like how quick they move. I honestly envy... (laughs) (laughs) I've got a tip for you, though. I've got a really big tip for you. I mean, it's terrifying if you're scared of them. But if you... I have staring competitions with spiders because they don't... They don't move. If you stare at a spider, (laughs) promise you now, it will not move. (laughs) Oh, right, okay. so I've got a little story time for you because I'm petrified of them and always have been. Me and my mum lived in this apartment and we lived like in an apartment and we had a field at the back so we always used to get like giant like mm-hmm. wolf spiders in our house. They were humongous. Um, my mum actually woke up one morning with two little bites and a heel and we're like, we swear it was a spider. Oh my God. And um, well, my mum had a new boyfriend and I didn't really know him that much and they were just like chilling in another room. And me and my friend were watching a film and I spotted a massive wolf spider start to have a breakdown. And I went over to it and I was like, oh my God, I said to my friend Adele, don't move, keep watching it, have a staring contest because it won't move. Went to go and get my mum's boyfriend and I come back and it had gone. And Adele was like, I've just lost it, I've lost it. So I'm looking behind the curtain, I'm looking behind the TV. I'm like, it was there, it was there. So I turned around and my mum went, Lauren, I'm... I'm honestly, I'm not even joking now. I need you to stay really still. Darren will get it, but it is crawling up your back. <laughs> I had a breakdown. Oh my God. And I'm not joking. I literally stripped in front of my, new, my mum's new boyfriend. <laughs> I ran out into the street in my bra. <laughs> and I was like, I'm really sorry, Darren, but I was so scared. Were you actually up your back? 100%. Though? Yeah, oh. she still says it to this day. She's like, I'm, I wasn't lying, Lauren, and I'll tell you if I was. Oh. Yeah. And she said it was massive. And I was like, I know I saw it first. <laughs> So you said you watched It then, you're into like horror films. Um, I love horror films, but um, it, it is kind of one that I like never went back and watched because yeah. it freaked me out that much. Uh-huh. So so we bought it from Asda, because my mum must be like this psycho, wants me to be a psycho murderer, because she just <laughs> used to buy me horror films all the time. <laughs> and um, the CD was, you had to flip it to watch the second half. So I watched part one, went to bed, had nightmares, my mum would never let, let me watch the second half. And you know what you like when, when you're a kid, you just... Even though it scared me to death, I wanted to watch the second part. So every time she went out and we realised you had to flip the DVD, I'd try and watch it and she'd come back and I had to like slyly take out the DVD player so she didn't know. I miss the DVD days. Oh, me too. Blockbusters. What a vibe. Did you ever... How old are you? 24? 24. So you're younger than me. So do you remember like videos and all that? Yeah. Yeah. Nintendo's. Nintendo Wii. Yeah. Now it's Nintendo Switch. Uh, A DS. Did Mm. you have a DS? Um, well, yeah, I did Nintendo DSi. Just took pictures on it. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a bit fancy. I know. <laughs> and I still stand by. There was no better game than Mario and <gasps> Nintendo. Mine was oh, the one with the dogs. Mm. But then it because you didn't go on it for a few months, but they were still there. <laughs> it, I always thought, oh my. Here's the thing: they've not died. <laughs> They need, a, they need a bloody good bath. <laughs> They've not died. Why is my dog living forever? <laughs> Did you ever have a Tamagotchi? Mm. Oh, I love Tamagotchi. They got banned from my primary school because people are obsessed with them. Oh. Mm. oh. And now they're like this retro thing, aren't they, that people yeah. have brought back? Yeah. But no, they, I could mm. never keep one of them alive either. No. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually feeling quite defeated. I know. But I feel like what we've got, got to try left? the last one. Is it? What is that one? Oh, Lemon so cake. Mm. I'm actually a sucker for a bit of a lemon dessert as well. Mm. That la- no, no. <laughs> I like a lemon meringue pie. My nan makes it absolutely incredible lemon meringue pie. But I'm not. Oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Look Ooh. at my look at my plate. I'm just like trying to be <laughs> It's like a, an afternoon tea tasting <laughs> session. <laughs> okay. That's for me, not for mm-hmm. me. Okay. <clears throat> oh, that's a bit of me, that. Mm-hmm. That's a bit of me. Mm-hmm. That's dead good, that. Not for me, but... <laughs> I see why you like Have it. Have you ever watched um, Bridesmaids where everything Annie likes, Helen doesn't like? It's my favourite chick flick of all time. And she's like, mm, I don't. <laughs> I was like, no, but I like it. Mm, not mm. for me. <laughs> I'd wait. What's your favourite out of all of them? Um, mm, I would probably say the York one, <laughs> but without the York and without the nuts. Just so just the, the tart. <laughs> yeah, that was my favourite. Mm, okay. I've never actually properly had a full afternoon tea. Mm. I do afternoon tea events all the time with my characters, but I've never sat down and had an afternoon tea with mm. someone. Well, I think the Lowry do a very good You're one. You're my first one, oh, Emma. I feel very privileged. Me too. Would you come again? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. We should come again off camera. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about more. <laughs> oh, I'm defeated though, are you? Yeah. Quite sickly after that's gone. I'm sure the people behind the camera can have a few of these, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, Emma. Is anyone is anyone feeling <laughs> Emma's leftovers? <laughs> so out of the whole experience of the afternoon tea, what would you rate out of ten? Um, do you know what? <laughs> the pressure. <laughs> ten out of ten. <gasps> yeah. Um, I think my favourite part was the scone. I'm not gonna lie. I think I agree. And your motivational tea? Um, <laughs> it wasn't the best choice. <laughs> mm, <laughs> so nice. <laughs> Okay, gave Thank me a lot of motivation. <laughs> okay, so brilliant from the Lowry. We rated it ten out of ten. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very sick after all them desserts now. Oh, might have to unbutton the jeans. <laughs> so after that amazing afternoon tea, which I am very the jeans. <laughs> It's undoing boil, it's okay. We're going to play a few games. Mm-hmm. So the first one... Are you going to tell everyone that we've reminded you not to read the oh, answers yeah. out? <laughs> the team had to remind me I not. used to do that on my kids' quizzes. Every quiz they'd go, Lauren gives away an answer. <laughs> oh, <sighs> I'll try not to. I'd be like, what dwarf is dopey? <laughs> like, literally give it away. Come okay, so this the first ones are this or that. So Ooh, very quick fire. We have just asked this. Off camera, but we'll ask it again. Start a raw dessert. Oh, uh, dessert. YouTube or Twitter? YouTube. Oh, I hate Twitter. Sorry. <laughs> Instagram or TikTok? TikTok. Iced coffee or hot coffee? Iced coffee. Oh, microwave or air fryer? Microwave. Oh, but an air fryer's a game changer. Yeah, but it's, it's proper bougie, that, isn't it? Good old microwave. <laughs> <laughs> heels or trainers? Oh, Heels. Are your heels on a night out kind of good? Absolutely. Never yeah. go out Even though training. it kills me, but pain is beauty. Yeah. Cinema trip or bowling trip? Cinema trip. Cinema trip for first date or bowling first date? Bowling first date. I'm with you. Yeah. McDonald's or Domino's? McDonald's. Oh, silly question. What's your McDonald's go to? Oh, <laughs> chicken selects, actually. Mm-hmm. Like it. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I think this one's going to be a hard one. Movies or musicals? Movies. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to say musicals. No, without a doubt. Love my movies. Um, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Okay, that's it for this or that. Lovely. Yeah, that was quick. Yeah. You did that very quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next <clears throat> one is where the team had to warn me not to re- re- a, a re- what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what is it? What are we doing? And let's start again. <laughs> it's the scone. Yes. <sighs> okay. The next one is fact or fish. <laughs> Fact or fishing? <laughs> hey, that's all the fish we've eaten. That's the fish. <laughs> fact or fiction? I'm going to get this so wrong. Okay, the next one is fact or fiction. <laughs> <laughs> and Emma's saying lots of words wrong. <laughs> Dude, it's you stop putting me off. <laughs> Dave! <laughs> so the next one is fact or fiction. <laughs> You say a word, it, st- it starts to not be a word anymore. <laughs> you might just say true or false. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, the next game is true or false. Fact or fiction? <laughs> Emma can't say fiction. Can't say that. <laughs> okay, number one. Ketchup was once sold as medicine. F- fiction. <laughs> no, that's true. Is it? Yes, the condiment was prescribed as sold to people suffering with indigestion back in the old 1834. Ooh, nice. 
Um, M and M's. <laughs> this just reminds me of the DIY. Yes. M and M stands for Mars and Moordale. Oh, I mean, um, f- fiction. Yes. Do you know what it stands for? No. <laughs> I don't even know what NYE stood for a few years ago. <laughs> um, it stands for Mars and Mur- Murray. Oh, that's a letdown, isn't it? <laughs> it's close, close. Yeah. Goldfish have have a two-second memory. True. That is true. Yeah. Oh, no, that's false. Oh. <laughs> Damn <laughs> <laughs> so, so good then. Their memories can last up. For, their memories can last for months. Oh, that must be a myth then. That's I've a heard lie. That everywhere that it's. Sorry, you've not one hundred thousand. No. <laughs> um, Australia is wider than the moon. Oh, uh, f- fact. Correct. The moon sits at three thousand four hundred kilometers in diameter, while Australia. East to west is almost four. Australia is massive. Yeah. Have you ever been? No. Is it somewhere you'd want to go? Yeah. But <laughs> spiders <laughs> and snakes and crocodiles, <laughs> so maybe where there's no bugs. <laughs> and the last one, cheesecake helps to soothe <laughs> beasts. <laughs> and we're back to cheesecake. Ooh. I've been there trying to do us over here. Cheesecake helps to soothe bee stings. Ooh, fiction. Correct. And I cannot read that word you put there. <laughs> Do they on purpose? Know. They know you. It's just not true. <laughs> Fact or fiction, cheesecake has cheese in it. <laughs> true. I know now. <laughs> okay, and the last game is Would You Rather. Okay. Okay. PG. PG version, definitely. <laughs> Might throw some in there. <laughs> Would you rather give up social media or eat the same meal for the rest of your life? I give up social media. I couldn't cope with that. Could not, I'm sorry, social media. I couldn't cope with that. But if you had to, what meal would you eat? For eat for the day? rest of my life. Yeah. Oh, that's so difficult. I actually think it would be a Sunday roast, but I'd just get sick of it and I'd ruin my favourite meal. But you could have a different meat every time. Mm, you couldn't because you had to eat the same meal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't just go changing bits. Or this a different meal. It's the rules. It's the rules ever. Okay, I'm. Just, sorry. <laughs> Would you rather always be twenty minutes late for every event, or always be an hour early? An hour early. I can't stand being late for mm-hmm. stuff. Really it's stresses me out. It's Even though the first two things I've done with Swan, I've been late to. <laughs> Not usually. <laughs> Uh, would you rather have to wear a princess costume for the rest of your life or be put or put on an American accent for the rest of your life? Oh, American accent, without a doubt. I, I feel like I was meant to be American. Yeah? I could be American, yeah. Have you ever been to America? No. Oh, oh New York, once. Yeah. Um, I'm going to New York yeah. again this year. <laughs> okay, New York's in America. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Um, but I feel like anything Americans do is way better than British people. Mm. Sorry, British people. I just see all the Coachella content on TikTok. I'm yeah, exactly. Mm. And then we've got like, <laughs> like, have you seen our festivals? Like Please. rubbish everywhere and stuff. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, very different. Um, would you rather be reborn into the past or into the future? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, probably the future, because I'd be intrigued to see like, because how far things have come since our parents were younger. Like, like my grandma didn't have TVs and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like, what is the future going to hold in terms of technology? Yeah. How, lo- how long in the future would you want to go? Oh, good. A good 200 years, let's say, just oh. to see, like, if iPhone is a thing of the past, you know, if yeah. TikTok's a thing of the past. And have you ever seen the movie The Island with Ewan McGregor? No. Like, that is, like, way set in the future. Oh. And uh, they've got things like, you just you just pull up a screen and you just type, like, into air, like... Oh to call someone and stuff. Uh-huh. Be intrigued to see stuff like that happens. Yeah. Um, would you rather only be able to wash your hair twice a year or only be able to check your phone once a day? Uh, I mean, <laughs> check my phone once a day. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Um, would you rather eat fast food? Would you rather never eat fast food again or never make a TikTok again? Oh, that is horrible. <laughs> Who wrote these questions? Um, so never eat a takeaway again or never make a TikTok again. Yeah. I'm actually going to say the the, the, the takeaway thing, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I feel like you can make a fake away. It's not as good, but yeah. I mean, TikTok is my career. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all the questions. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you want to cut it and then do the outro? Yeah, just, yeah. Just do the outro. Yeah. What so do I say? Okay. Thanks to Lowry. Thanks to Lauren. See you later. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> and cheese is in cheese cake. Things you haven't liked, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. It felt like the way you jiggle, jiggle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dave! <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much for joining us, Lauren. Thank you. And thank you very much to Larry for the lovely afternoon tea. It's been it was, lovely. It was lovely. Yeah, really, really nice. nice. So where can people find you on social media? Um, so it's just Lauren Saddington. It's not really a last name you forget. I always say it's uh, Paddington with an S whenever I go anywhere. Um, on TikTok, YouTube and Instagram. So. Oh, real. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. You later, Thanks to Lowry as well. Yeah. Fit, you just said that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we can thank him twice. Thank you, the Lowry. I can't get that food out of my head. <laughs> so good. Bye, everyone. Oh, and thanks, Swan, for having me. Thank you. <laughs> that was well fun.